Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. When robust, powerful jets take off to safeguard its nation from the adversaries, they can find themselves in all kinds of abnormal and emergency scenarios that may occur in flight. The key to successful management in an emergency situation is to be thoroughly prepared. In the military, almost any training mission has an embedded emergency training, which creates a mindset for a pilot to be as comfortable acting in an emergency as in a normal operation. In today's feature, let us explore some of the consequences of the aircraft mishaps at sea and the training that makes pilots and crew capable of saving themselves underwater. A failed landing or a takeoff on a short aircraft carrier strip can result in damage or loss of significant defense assets as well as the loss of the operating personnel. One such incident occurred on May 12, 2015, when an F-A-18F fighter jet took off to the skies from the USS Theodore Roosevelt aircraft carrier, only to eventually crash in the Arabian Gulf due to the mechanical failures suffered by one of its engines. While the aircrew was reported to have ejected safely and was recovered by the aircraft carrier's search and rescue personnel, U.S. Navy divers and explosive ordnance disposal technicians were put on a mission of successfully salvaging the wreck of the F-A-18's fuselage lost at sea. The mission presented a special difficulty because of the scale of the debris and the fact that it was buried 189 feet in the ocean. However, skilled divers and the U.S. Navy Catawba ship, equipped with a 10-ton capacity crane, was used to successfully accomplish the mission. An aircraft carrier's flight deck is supported by a firefighting and maintenance crew, which includes the crash and recovery team conducting regular training to ensure they are vigilant in a situation of a fire on board the aircraft. The drill involves crew wearing silver-coated proximity suits and helmets and simulating an aircraft crash scene on board the aircraft carrier. I got it. For this, they receive support and assistance from the crash and salvage team's truck personnel. The truck is equipped with fire hoses and other necessary equipment needed to respond to a fire emergency on board the ship. As part of the training, the team also lifts the aircraft and moves it away from the landing place using the Tilly crash and salvage crane. The drill consists of a Phase 2 and a Phase 3. During Phase 2, dollies are used to clear the landing area of the crashed aircraft's debris, while in Phase 3, the Tilly is used to clear the debris for the aircraft carrier's smooth and safe flight operations. Rescuing the injured personnel from the crash is also an integral part of the drill performed by the crew. To be able to handle the aircraft in a crash scenario, pilots are intensively trained using special flight simulators. Located in Patuxent River, Maryland, the Manned Flight Simulator, or MFS, facility has been a center of excellence for aircraft simulation for over three decades. Here, 
Pilots conduct maneuver training and practice emergency procedures in an effort to maintain the strict safety standards of the flight demonstration. The facility that initially began as a place to perform ground testing of the F-A-18 mission on a computer prior to in-flight testing has grown into an innovative cross-platform facility for modeling and simulation, as well as to test and evaluate integrated combat capabilities. The facility is now equipped with nine high-fidelity simulators including a six degree of freedom motion base providing acceleration and deceleration cues. Regardless of the most advanced training and flight readiness protocols followed by pilots, an aircraft and its crew is always prone to the probability of a crash landing whether on land or at sea. For a crash landing at sea, the shallow water egress training is used to train the pilots to escape the aircraft and rescue themselves. The training puts trainees in a chamber resembling the troop area of a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter that submerges and flips over in an indoor pool. This modular amphibious egress trainer is also known as the Dunker. Trainees are required to sit in individual seats in a float-lined cage. The instructors then flip the seats over to get them used to being inverted. The UH-60 is submerged into the pool with trainees inside and rotates upside down once submerged. The trainees develop survival skills that could save their lives if they are ever in an overwater helicopter crash. A similar training module provided to the Marines transported by helicopters over waters is the Helicopter Underwater Egress Training, or Hewitt. The training involves simulated sinking in a pool while rotating the training module upside down and focuses students on bracing for impact, identifying primary and secondary exit points, avoiding smoke inhalation, surfacing for air, and maintaining headcount. The training module simulates an immersed cabin rotating around a single axis, usually lengthwise. While the underwater egress training modules train the air crew to escape from a crash landing, the Air Force Combat Dive Course teaches students diving fundamentals through both open and closed-circuit self-contained underwater breathing apparatus training. Students learn basic diving, advanced rescue diving principles, as well as advanced combat diving fundamentals. Upon completion of the eight-week course, students are certified as Special Operations Command Combatant Divers, mastering use of scuba and closed-circuit diving equipment to covertly infiltrate denied areas. One might think that an indoor or outdoor pool can be used to train pilots in cases of crash landings or emergencies at sea. However, these pools extend much beyond the skies, even into space. Many training regiments for astronauts take them poolside, since training underwater is one of the best ways to simulate a low-gravity environment 
where they suit up and practice maneuvers underwater. The International Space Station is built in the form of a large mock-up and placed in a huge swimming pool at NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab in Houston. The 6.2 million gallon swimming pool is 102 feet wide, 202 feet long, and 40 feet deep. The lab technicians help suit up the astronaut before lowering him into the pool. Two safety divers are also present in the pool to deal with any mishaps, since the astronaut will be underwater for a period of six hours. Regardless of how intense these training modules are and the probability of risk remaining, they are surely of enormous benefit when it comes to protection of human life and billion dollar assets. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.